Hello there, Year 5. Uh, my name is Mrs Baker and I'm the Head of Vocational Studies and Head of Year 11 at the High School. I'm really pleased that you can join us uh, for a virtual experience of my subject today. In normal circumstances, you would obviously be coming up to the high school and be able to spend some time in the different departments and subject areas, getting a bit of a, a taster of what a high school is like and the things that you get to take part in. Sadly, we can't do that this year. So this is the next best thing. And hopefully uh, today we'll give you a real good experience of some of the things that you might get to cover if you choose to study my subject. So health and social care is an option subject. That means it's a subject that you choose to study, if you wish, from year nine onwards. And we cover lots of different topics in health and social care, uh, things like communication and care values. But I've chosen one particular topic that I wanted to focus on today called understanding body systems. And the reason I've chosen to focus on that topic is one, it's one of my favourite things uh, to look at. And the next one is I thought that many of you might already have crucial knowledge of this area from your science lessons at primary school. So we do link over to a lot of subjects. There's a lot of things that we do in health and social care that link into science, uh, that link into food technology. So lots of this knowledge I'm hoping you've already come across. And by the end of today's session, we might have extended your learning and understanding a little bit further or rec recap some of the crucial knowledge uh, that you've already got. So what are we going to learn in today's lesson then? It's always the most important thing. We want to know what we're going to learn. So we're going to focus on the heart today, which is part of the circulatory system. You're going to learn about what the role of the heart is in the body and the different parts of the heart so that hopefully by the end, you can answer some questions and label a diagram for me on your worksheet. Star words. I always like to pick out the star words. This is crucial knowledge. You need to know these words. You need to know how to say these words, how to spell the words. Um, and you will come across these star words throughout my session today. So I'm going to run through them so that you've heard me say these star words. If you want to pause the video afterwards and have a go at repeating the words. Can you pronounce those words correctly? Because there are some words here that you might not have come across before. So I'll start from the top. I'm going to work my way across and down. So the first star word is vein. Heart, vessels, coronary, circulatory, carbon dioxide, blood, Oxygen, artery, cardiac, glucose, pulmonary, atrium and ventricle. So like I say, if you want to pause the video and have a go at saying those words yourself for a little practice or cover them up and have a go at spelling them, say them and then spell them because spelling is really important. If you choose to take this topic with me when you come to high school, you have to produce a piece of work um, and spelling is one of the things that's assessed in there. So we do have lots of practice at spelling our star words. So you've heard me already mention the circulatory system and I'm hoping that already might be spurring some ideas in your mind about what we're going to talk about because you've seen some of those star words already. So we look at body systems and one of the body systems is the circulatory system and it's made up of three different parts. The heart, the blood vessels and blood itself. So when we look at the role of the heart, that's what keeps the blood flowing throughout our circulatory system. And you can see the diagram of the person at the side. You've got the heart in the middle of the chest. And then they've got all of the blood vessels running around the body. That's a really simple diagram. It's way more complex than that, but we don't need to go into that much detail today. So the blood will travel through the network of blood vessels to everywhere in your body. And it carries really useful materials. So things like oxygen, water and nutrients. And it also removes waste products like carbon dioxide. So when I want to start exercising and moving around, the muscles that I will use to do that in my arms and my legs 
require oxygen to be able to carry out that action and the nutrients that are delivered, things like glucose, which is a type of sugar that provides energy. As my muscles use that, okay, to create the movement, it produces what we call a waste product like carbon dioxide. And so the blood takes that away from the muscles. So the circulatory system is essential to our body and being able to operate. So as I mentioned to you, we were going to look at the heart specifically today. So what is the heart? It's a muscle, but it's not like any other muscle in your body. It's what we call a cardiac muscle. And that type of muscle is only found in your heart. You can't find that type of muscle anywhere else in your body. It's different to the muscles in my arms and my legs. They are called skeletal muscles. Cardiac muscle only found in the heart and most importantly it never tires if i imagine now if i was going to go and lift lots of boxes with my muscles in my arms eventually they would get really tired and my arms would ache and i wouldn't be able to lift any more boxes my heart doesn't do that it doesn't stop beating because it doesn't tire the heart does receive its own blood supply and that comes from what we call the coronary arteries and they obviously then supply that cardiac muscle, the heart, with the glucose and oxygen it needs to work. You might sometimes hear people talk about heart attacks, and that can often be caused by a blockage in the coronary artery. When that happens, when there's a blockage, sometimes that blockage can be removed. Lots of different procedures that take place um, in modern medicine, and you may well have heard of something called a bypass before. And that is where the blockage will be bypassed, where the surgeon puts a new blood vessel in to work away around that blockage. So it's very clever, the things that we can do with the heart. It's a very complex organ and is essential to our living. So here is a diagram of the heart. So you remember I said to you at the start of the lesson, one of the things I want you to be able to learn today is the different parts of the heart to be able to label a diagram. So you will have this diagram in your workbook to have a go at labelling. Now, I don't want you to just copy the labels. I want you to see if you can remember the different parts of the heart so that you can label them yourself without looking at this. It's real crucial knowledge for my subject that you can label this. When you produce the piece of work in my subject, you will have a diagram like the one that's on the screen and you would have to put the labels on there by yourself. So I'll just talk through this diagram of the heart. You can see that it's split left and right. We've got four chambers that make up the heart. We've got the atria at the top and we've got the ventricles at the bottom. And then we've got veins and arteries um, that help bring blood into the heart and pump it away from the heart afterwards. We've also got some valves in there that do a really important job. So I'll talk through it. We've got the right atrium and the left atrium. We've got a right ventricle and a left ventricle. So those are the four chambers I was telling you about. We've got the vena cava, which is a vein that leads into the right atrium. We've got the pulmonary artery, which leads out of the right ventricle. We've then got the pulmonary vein that leads into the left atrium. And we've got the aorta, which is an artery that leads out of the left ventricle. And then you can see the two valves between the atria, atrium and the ventricle are the tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valve. That is a very simple diagram of the heart. And I'm going to show you over the next few slides what happens in terms of how the heart beats uh, to push that blood around the circulatory system. So how does it work then? As I just said, it's split into two sides, the left and the right. The right side pumps blood through to the lungs. Blood then returns to the left hand side, which pumps the blood around the body. And you can see that on the diagram on the right hand side. The heart and the arteries have valves, which is what I showed you on the diagram, and that stops the blood from flowing backwards. If you imagine if 
the blood flows down into the ventricles and then it's pushed up out of the heart through the arteries. We don't want it flowing backwards. OK, so on the diagram there, you can see the lungs at the top, the body at the bottom. And if you follow the arrows, you can see the route that the blood takes through the circulatory system. And you can see where it tells you that there's low oxygen, so low O2 and high CO2, which is carbon dioxide, when it comes out and round the lungs. And then in the lungs is where the blood picks up the oxygen. So it comes back down into the heart, down into the ventricle, and then it's pumped out and around to the body. OK, and then it returns back to the heart, deoxygenated because we've got the waste products in there and the oxygen has been used by those muscles in our body and it goes back to the lungs again to be reoxygenated. Here's another way of looking at it. So we've got the deoxygenated blood from the body enters the right atrium. So this is the blue side here. The atria relaxed and oxygenated blood, blood from the lungs enters the left atrium. So this is happening at the same time. So blood is filling into the top chambers of the heart. Once that happens, the right atrium contracts, so pulsates, and the pressure forces open the tricuspid valve and blood enters the right ventricle. So you can see the arrow indicating there that the blood will move down into the ventricle. At the same time, the left atrium also contracts and that pressure forces open the bicuspid valve and the blood enters the left ventricle. So this is all happening at the same time. So the blood's gone from the top chambers of the heart down into the bottom chambers. Now, you can see on the diagram there that the walls of the heart are really thick towards the bottom because you've got to imagine we've got to force this blood now from those bottom chambers out and around the body into the lungs. So this is the part of the heart that's really strong. Think of it like a toothpaste tube, OK? You've got to really squeeze the toothpaste all the way up to the top and so it forces it out. It's got to be strong to develop that pressure. So on this slide, you can see we'll now have the blood in the ventricles at the bottom. You can see that the valves have closed to the atria to stop that blood back, back flowing. And the right ventricle contracts and the pressure on the tricuspid valve pushes it closed to prevent that blood moving back into the atrium. The left ventricle at the same time is contracting. Obviously, the pressure closes by cuspid valve, the same as it does on the other side, and prevents the blood flowing back into the atria. The blood then pushes open what we call the semilunar valve. So this is a valve inside the arteries um, and moves the blood into the pulmonary artery. And on the other side, we've got the blood pushes open the semilunar valve and moves into the aorta. So this is now where we're sending that blood back to the lungs to be reoxygenated or out to the body um, to be used uh, to deliver oxygen to the muscles. So here's my diagram again. Now I'm giving you lots of opportunities to look at this diagram and everything that we've just talked through in terms of the function of the heart when it beats. OK, you can look at in this diagram. You can see those valves are really important. Otherwise, blood would be flowing back up where it's come from and we don't want that to happen. Now, there can be some medical conditions where those valves don't work properly for some people. And again, because of how advanced medicine is, that's something that surgeons can often operate on and correct. So it's quite fantastic uh, to see some of the things that we can now correct when there are defects with the heart. So as many opportunities as you can to look at that diagram, pause the video if you need to. OK, and really try and take in all those different labels. Can you remember what the top chambers of the heart are called? Can you remember what the bottom chambers of the heart are called? Some interesting facts for you. The heart beats around 100,000 times a day. Now, any of you that are good at maths, I want you to go away and work out how many times it would beat a week 
and how many times it would be to month and then tell me how many times it would be to year. So if you're good at your maths, go away and see if you can work out those figures for me. The next one is that the heart pumps around 9,500 litres of blood a day. So I would need to drink two of these water bottles to drink a litre of water. So if I think about that, 9,500 litres of blood, that's an awful lot of blood that gets pumped uh, by the heart around the body. Next one, your heart grows as you grow. So you aren't born with a heart that you need when you're an adult. It does grow. The muscle grows. It can get stronger. So as you grow older and your body becomes bigger, the heart will need to adapt and grow to enable it to be able to deliver the oxygen and nutrients you need uh, in your body. It gets stronger the more you use it. So if you start running on a regular basis, the muscle gets stronger. Just like if I started lifting more and more boxes, the muscles in my arms would get stronger. And believe it or not, the heart is the strongest muscle in your body. So it's stronger than your biceps, which you use when you're lifting boxes. It is the strongest muscle in your body. So here's your challenges. On your worksheet, you've got some questions that I would like you to answer. And I want you to think about what the question is referring to. So these prevent blood flowing backwards. What are they? Blood returns to the heart by this type of blood vessel. Blood on the left side of the heart is what? Oxygenated or deoxygenated. What is it on the right side of the heart? The heart muscle is what type of muscle? And these arteries give the heart its own blood supply. So see if you can identify what that question is referring to. And you might need to go back to those star words which were part of our crucial knowledge today. And the last activity on your worksheet is can you label the heart? OK, so have a think. What were the top chambers called? What were the bottom chambers called? Can you remember which valve was at which side? See if you can label that diagram correctly. Thank you very much for listening to our health and social care lesson today. That was a real quick snapshot of the things that we do in health and social care. We have a great time. It's enjoyable. It's hard work, too, uh, but we learn lots and lots of things and we recap them on a regular basis. And hopefully, if you decide to join us in health and social care when you come to high school, you'll be able to use a lot of the knowledge you've gained from science at primary school and your science lessons at high school as well. So go away, have a go at completing your worksheet, get your teachers to check your answers. Don't forget what the most important things were today, those star words, okay? And I want you to be able to identify those different parts of the heart so that you can label it. Thank you, Year 5. Take care.